Hi players, bonjour from Paris, my name is Asaf Hirsch and welcome to my channel Easy Board Games. Today I'm very happy to show you how to play Forbidden Stars by Fantasy Flight Games. A huge thank you and a shout out to Adrien Fichel that took his time to verify the video before releasing it. As always, if you learn something new or saw something that you like, please consider subscribing to the channel, like and comment on the video, let me know which kind of game would you like to see on this channel. Ready to see how we play? Let's go to setup. Alright guys, so in terms of setup, I'm using the same thing that we can see on page 4 in the Learn to Play booklet. So I'm not going to explain how to do the custom setup. If you would like to uh, have an explanatory playthrough and also to include the setup, just let me know. So here I've done a setup for three players. I'm going to have the red, blue and green players, or so different factions. And let's just go over uh, quickly the different pieces that we can see over here. So, starting from this corner, we have the different buildings, like cities, bastions, and the factories. We're going to have the combat dice. On the other side of the board, we can see uh, the round tracker, and we have different tokens that we're going to talk about a little bit later. For each player, we're going to have the faction sheet, as we can see right over here. We're going to have this wheel that is going to indicate how much material this faction has. We're going to have eight order tokens, two for each kind of order. Also, we're going to have four different deck of cards. This is the combat uh, deck. This is the event deck. And those two are the upgrade decks. One of them is for the uh, combat cards and the other one is for the order tokens. Also, each player is going to have the different units and pay attention, of course, since this is an asymmetrical game, then each faction is going to have different units, of course, uh, represented by different miniatures. And we're going to have structure control tokens also, each faction is going to have that in their color. The last thing that we can see over here is the first player token. And of course, as you understand, the red faction is going to be the first player. In Forbidden Stars, each player is going to take the role of a different uh, faction, a symmetrical one. Now we're going to have eight rounds or less. And in each round, starting from the first player going clockwise, we're going to have three different phases. The first phase is the planning phase, where each player in their turn is going to take one of these order tokens and he's going to put it on one of the systems in this kind of locations. After all the players have put down four of these order tokens, we're going to finish this phase and we're going to move on to the operations phase, where again, starting with the first player and going clockwise, each player is going to choose one of his visible order tokens, and later you'll understand why I'm saying a visible one, and he's going to flip it to the other side and execute that specific order token. After that, we're going to have the refresh phase where we're going to have a certain procedure. And after that, we're just going to advance to the next round and we're going to have the same three phases. The first faction that will take all of their objective tokens will be declared the winner. And if by the end of the eighth round, no faction has managed to take a, all of their objective tokens, the faction that has the most objective tokens will be declared as the winner. Now, I'm saying enough objective tokens because in each uh, player count, the number of objective tokens will be different. Since this is a three player game, each uh, faction has three objective tokens that they will try to take during the game. So again, for the example, the red faction will try to take their three objective tokens. In this phase, like we've said before, starting with the first player and going clockwise, each faction will put on the board one of their uh, order tokens. So now let's dive in just a little bit to understand the terminology of the board that we can see right now. Now, each one of these squares is called a system. So a player is going to put their order token inside a system. Pay attention that a, a faction can put their order token only in a system that already contains some of their units or in an adjacent one. Now, an adjacent system is a system that uh, shares the same border, just like we can see over here, and not diagonally. And that means that the red faction will not be able to put, for example, one of their order tokens right over here in this system. Inside each system, we're going to have two different kinds of territory. The first one is called a world. This is where we can see those different planets. 
And the other type of territory is this void. This is where we don't have planets, we have this uh, kind of space. Each time a player is putting their order token, they're of course going to put it a face down and not face up. So this is a hidden information. And they're going to put it just like this. If at a later point, another faction would like to put a, an order token in the same system, there is of course no problem. They're going to take their a, order token and they're going to put it just on top of the other faction's order tokens. So here we have the situation of the board after all the factions have put their order tokens in the different systems. In this phase, again starting from the first player, this faction is going to choose one of their visible order tokens that they would like to execute. Now I'm saying a visible order token because if this, just for the example, would have been the situation, then obviously the red faction does not have a visible order token and their turn has to be skipped. That means that the next faction and then the next faction and so on would have continued to execute their turns and the red faction would have been able to execute their turn if when uh, their turn comes again they have a visible order token. The other option that the player has after a uh, revealing an order token is to not resolve it and actually take it and put it on the event deck and do something that we're going to see a little bit later in the refresh phase. But as we already saw, this is actually the situation. So the red player needs now to decide if they would like to resolve this order token or this one. So let's start with the first action and that is the deploy. So the red player is uh, revealing this order token and they're going to execute the deploy action in this system. This system now will be considered as the active system. Why? Because this is the system that we're executing the action in. With the deploy order, we'll be able to do two things. The first one is to purchase units, and the second one is to purchase structures. Pay attention that this order is super important because you will not be able to, first of all, purchase structures and then purchase units. Now, in order to purchase a unit, you will need to have a factory that is controlled by you in the active system. As you can see right now, the red player does not have in this active system a factory. They have it in this system. So over here, they will not be able to uh, purchase units. They will have to skip that and move directly to purchase buildings. But since we're explaining, let's say that this order token would have been right over here. So first of all, the amount of units that you'll be able to uh, recruit depends on the amount of skulls that you can see right over here on the banner. And it has to be the specific world that your factory is situated on. In another case, if this was the situation, that means that in the active system, we're going to have two factories. The uh, limit of units that you'll be able to uh, produce would have been three plus four, that means seven units in total. So when you're purchasing units, you'll be able to, first of all, purchase only the units that your command level allows you to. Now, command level depends on how many cities you have, which is something that we haven't seen yet. But right now, since the red faction does not have cities at all, their command level is zero. That means that in terms of units, they will be able to only purchase the cultists, or the icon class destroyers. When we want to purchase a unit, we need to pay the price of materials as we can see right over here. So we can see that in order to uh, purchase one of these units, the red faction will have to pay a uh, two material per unit. In order to pay these materials, we have two options. One of them is to do it by uh, this wheel. That means that right now we have six materials. That's the starting amount of materials each faction has. And they will need to turn it to number four to indicate that they have spent two materials. Now, ground units you will have to produce only on the worlds themselves. So you will not be able to purchase a cultist and put it over here in the void. It will have to be in one of these uh, worlds. And the world has to be either a friendly world, that means a world that contains uh, one of your units or buildings, or it will have to be an uncontrolled world, that means a world without units at all, but of course it has to be 
in the active system. If you're producing a flyer, that means one of these uh, spaceships, then you'll have to put it in a void. Now, the second option to pay for units, and for that matters for buildings as well, is to use these tokens that are called, sorry for my English, uh, cash tokens or cash tokens. Sorry, please feel free to correct me and tell me how to pronounce that. Each one of these tokens is worth two materials. Now, pay attention that some of the units actually cost also a, a forge token, as you can see right over here, for example, with the Chaos River Titans. So this is something, again, that comes in a form of a token. Also, you can use this forge token in order to take down one command level, but only one, by paying one of these tokens. So let's say that the red player has one of these tokens and he would like to produce the Chaos Space Marines. Since he doesn't have cities at all, his command level is zero, but he will be able to pay one of these uh, tokens, this forge token, and then they will be able to uh, treat the Chaos Space Marines as their command level is actually zero. After you have finished purchasing units, now it's time to purchase buildings. So buildings, just like the ground units, you will be able to place only on a world in the active system. So let's take back the token to where it was originally, and you'll be able to uh, put a building only in a friendly world. That means a world that contains one or more of your units. And in our specific case, it means that the red player will be able to purchase a building and place it right over here, and not place it over here in this world. So the first building we already saw, that was the uh, factory, that allows us to purchase units in that specific system. The second building is what we can see over here, and that is the Bastion, and that will uh, help us actually to protect the world when uh, someone will uh, try to invade, because it's some sort of a defense tower, and we're going to see it a little bit later. Also, that Bastion will keep uh, worlds from being attacked by an orbital strike, but again, this is something that we'll be able to see later with combat. The third type of building is the city, and as we've already said, each city will be worth one a uh, command level. So that means that if a faction will have three cities, doesn't matter where on the board, they will be able to purchase any uh, unit they would like in terms of command levels. Now pay attention that each area inside the system has actually a unit capacity. That means that this specific area will not be able to contain more units than indicated. And this is again, the same thing that we have seen before with the skulls. This is not only how many units you'll be able to deploy, that means also how many units you'll be able to put on that specific area. In this case of this world, it will be able to contain up to four units. A void will always have the unit capacity of three units. Now, two things that are worth mentioning at this point. First of all, buildings do not count uh, against this uh, unit capacity. And also, you will be able to exceed that unit capacity because the only time that we're going to check it is after resolving an order and also at the end of each event phase. Now, if at the time that you're checking for the unit capacity in a specific area and you exceed it, you'll have to destroy some of these units and put them uh, back in your supply in order to keep that unit capacity at maximum. So just to give a small example, let's say that the red faction has decided to build a city right over here. They're going to pay two materials, so it's already on four, that's okay. That player is going to take one of the cities from the supply. He's going to take this building control marker, he's going to put it right over here, and on top of that, he's going to put the city. That is to indicate that this specific city belongs to the red faction. And also now we know that the red faction command level is one. The red faction has finished uh, executing this order token, so they're going to take it back to their uh, faction sheet. The next action that we're going to talk about is the dominate action. So now it's the blue player's turn. He's going to reveal this order token and we'll see what's going on over here. 
So also here we have two things that we'll need to do in a certain order. The first thing is to gain assets. The player is going to gain the assets granted by each friendly world in the active system. So again, this is the active system. These are the friendly worlds, right? Because both of them contain uh, our units. Again, this is the blue factions uh, turn. And the assets are what we can see over here at the right side of the banner. So over here, it's going to be one of these forge tokens. And over here, it's going to be one token of these cache tokens. So the blue player is going to take one of these tokens right over here and this one, and they're going to put them next to their faction sheet and they will be able to use it a little bit later. Two other tokens that you might sometimes uh, take are the reinforcement tokens that there are something that we're going to see a little bit later in combat. And also we're going to have the prosperity icon, as we can see right over here, for example. And that means that the player who's just executed this action will be able to choose any one of the tokens that we have talked about before. The second thing that we're going to do is to resolve the faction ability. The player may resolve the special ability listed on their faction sheet. What we can see right over here with the blue player, but again, this is an asymmetrical game, so each faction is going to have something different. We can see that the blue player has something that is called for the emperor. When you resolve a dominate order, which we just did, you may spend one material to either replace one scout in the active system with one free space marine, or replace one space marine in the active system with one free land raider. So that is pretty cool, right? Because right now the blue faction will be able to spend one of the materials. So from six, it will go down to five and they will be able to replace for free one of their scouts. Here we can see that they have two with one space marine. So let's say that they have decided to uh, replace this one. They're going to put the scout back in their supply and they're going to put instead of it one unit of the space marine. So I'm not going to uh, go over all of the special abilities of the factions. They're pretty uh, straightforward. So let's just move on to the next action. Now it's the green faction's turn and they're going to uh, resolve this order token right over here, which brings us to the next action. And that is the strategize order. Now, in order to resolve it, the player needs to have at least one unit or structure in the active system. Now, this faction will be able to look throughout all their revealed cards. We're going to have here two types of cards, right? Either the combat cards that are the upgraded ones or the order upgrade cards, and they will be able to uh, purchase up to one of each. So how do we do that? First of all, also here, we're going to have a, a difference between the command levels. Some of them are going to be worth zero, and that means that we can purchase it right away. And other cards are going to have one command level or even two command levels. So when we're purchasing a, this card, of course, first of all, we'll need to pay the cost with a material. Pay attention that here, you will not be able to spend this kind of tokens. It's only if you have materials uh, with this wheel. And after you've purchased it, you're just going to put it next to your board. And that means that every time you're going to resolve this order, you're going to have either a certain bonus or this order is just a, a, a little bit stronger than the normal one. So we have here a, a few of them, right? We have even the a deploy. We have the strategize as we've just seen and so on. So let's say that they've decided to do uh, this one, to take this one. They're going to pay one material. So from six, we're going to go down to five and they will be able to put this next to their uh, faction mat in order to use it in a later time. Then they will be able to look throughout their uh, upgraded combat cards. And again, we can see here that we have either level zero or later even a uh, two command levels and three command levels. Now, when you're purchasing uh, this kind of cards, again, you will not be able to use these uh, tokens in order to do that. You need to pay the amount and you're going to take two copies of the same card. So basically each card here has a copy, okay? They're come in pairs. So let's say that they have uh, chosen this kind of card. They're going to take it and then they're going to uh, choose from their combat deck Again, a pair of combat cards. So let's say they have decided to take both of these. They're going to take out from the game these two cards and they're going to uh, put in this deck the new cards. 
After that, they're just going to uh, shuffle their combat deck, and again, it's going to go face down next to their faction mat. After the faction has finished purchasing the upgraded cards that they wanted, they're going to take this token and they're going to put it face down on the uh, event deck, and we're going to see what's going with that a little bit later in the refresh phase. The last order that we're going to talk about is the advance order. So let's say that it's again the blue player's uh, turn, and he's going to reveal this order right over here. Now this is basically a movement action that can sometimes trigger combat as well. So when we have this, we'll be able to move units either in the active system, but right now the blue player has no units over here, or we'll be able to move units to the active system from adjacent systems. Now also here we have a certain order, so we will need to first of all move the ships if we want to, and only after we'll be able to move the ground units. So let's look at a few examples. Now I can move this ship, for example, from any uh, void that we have in an adjacent system into any void in the active system. So I can do either this or I can move even over here. After you have finished moving off your ships, then you can move your ground units. Now when you're moving your ground units from an adjacent uh, system, you're going to have to make sure that either it's from an adjacent world, like we can see over here, right? These are two different systems, but this world is considered adjacent to this one. Or you will have to move your units through something that is called a path. Now, a path, if I'm reading from the rule book, is a series of contiguous, non-diagonal, friendly areas. That basically means that we're creating some sort of a link. So let's just take another small example. Let's say that this was the situation, okay, uh, over here, and I moved my ship over here. That means that I can move uh, ground units over here with the help of the link that we have created with these two ships. So the blue faction would have been able to move uh, this scout over here and also this scout right over here. Pay attention that once you have moved a ship from a specific system to the active system, you will not be able to move ground units from different systems. So again, if we go back to our first example, I will not be able to move this marine unit through this path because the ship has moved from this system to this one. Now, one more thing before we forget about movement. Pay attention to these warp storms that we can see right now on the board. In a three-player game, we're going to have three of those. And as you already may be a guest, units are not able to cross one of those warp storms whatsoever. After we have finished moving units with the advance order, we need to see if we have contested areas. Contested areas means that either we're going to have a void area or a world area that contain units from two factions. So let's just take a small example and advance from there. In this case, we have one Space Marine and one Scout from the blue faction, and we have one Chaos Space Marine from the red faction. Now we're going to resolve the combat, so we have a few steps. The first step is the preparation, where both of the uh, players are going to roll combat dice according to their unit stats. So over here we have one Space Marine and one Scout, and together they're going to roll four combat dice. And the Chaos Space Marine, as we can see over here, has three combat dice. So this is what we have for the blue player, and this is what we have for the red player. Then both factions will need to draw five combat cards from their combat card deck. The last step in the preparation is that the factions, starting with the attackers, are choosing if they want to use uh, some of their reinforcement tokens. Now, this is something that we're going to see uh, soon enough, but each faction will be able to use the number of uh, reinforcement tokens as the number of units that are participating in this uh, combat. So in our case, the blue player will be able to use up to two reinforcement uh, tokens, and the red player will be able to use only one. So let's say that the red player is going to choose to use one reinforcement token. And reinforcement tokens have basically the same stats as uh, the basic ground unit with the command level of zero. So with the example of the red faction, it's going to be a cultist. So we're just going to put it over here on the token itself. 
No pay attention that it's not going to contribute any combat dice or morale or anything else. It's just here uh, basically to absorb some uh, damage. The next step is the execution phase where both players are going to choose and put face down one of their combat cards that they have uh, drawn in the last step. The next step is the execution where both players are going to choose simultaneously a combat card from what they have drawn in the previous step and they're going to place it face down. Then starting with the attacker, they're going to reveal their card and they're going to resolve it. What does it mean to resolve it? That means that they're going to execute whatever it says on the card from top to bottom. Now, usually whatever we can see right over here at the uh, upper part is going to be just a general bonus. And at the second part, we're going to have a second bonus, but only if we have that a specific unit in that combat. So in this case, with a card that is called Fury of the Ultramar, your opponent rerolls one a combat die that shows a shield, like we have right over here. Then you may reroll one combat die that shows a, a shield, like we can see over here. So these are basically the three combat dice uh, options that we have, either a damage or a shield or morale. And this is something that we're going to uh, see soon enough. Then you can force your opponent to lose either one combat die that shows a shield, again, like we can see right over here, or two tokens with the shield icon. So these uh, tokens, what we can see right over here, are something that we're going to receive temporarily from different effects. But pay attention that between execution phases, because we're going to do this thing three times, we're going to discard them. Now, since, of course, the red player doesn't have any one of these tokens, then this effect can take place only with uh, the combat die that shows the shield. So the red player is going to do uh, the same thing. He's going to turn it and resolve whatever we have over here. Let's ignore it for now just to advance. And then we're going to uh, go to the next step, which is to assess the damage. So now we're going to see, starting with the attacker, how much damage uh, is it going to do? We have here one, two, and also we're going to uh, see what we have over here on the card, that is three. From that, we need to reduce how many shields does the uh, red player has. So he has one, two, and that means that the blue player is causing the red player one damage. Now I'm going to take you back to the stats on our faction sheet, and we can see that this uh, cultist has uh, two hit points, and the Chaos Space Marine has three hit points. The defender will need to choose one of these units to take all the damage. In our case, it's only one, but soon we will see what happens if we have more. So when they're choosing one of these units, and uh, that unit is not dead, that means only injured, right? Because it's not enough to cover for all the hit points. That unit is going to be considered as routed, and we're going to put it on the side. If it would have been uh, the token itself, that we can just flip it to the other side to show uh, the red background. Now it's important to say that the defender can choose uh, to take damage with a unit only if it is not already routed. We can find routed units from a uh, different card effects or if we have from a previous round a unit that was uh, damaged. So in a different round, let's say that this unit would have been uh, already routed, the defender cannot choose this unit again uh, to uh, take damage, it has to choose the next one that is not yet uh, routed. Now in another example, let's say that the blue player is doing three more damage, so right now we have five, right, minus the two that we can see on the red player, that is three damage. So, three damage is enough to kill either the a Chaos Space Marine or the Cultist. If the defender chooses first to take damage with the Chaos Space Marine, then three damage with three hit points, that unit is destroyed and will go back to the supply of the red player. If the red player would have decided to take first damage with the uh, reinforcement token, then this unit is destroyed, but we have a surplus of one damage and another unit will need to take that one damage because it's not enough to kill the Chaos Space Marine of the red faction, it will be routed. After we have resolved the damage from the attacker, we're going to do the same thing with uh, the defender. 
if at the end of this execution phase we still have uh, units from two factions, we're going to continue to another round, playing uh, again in the same order another combat card, again resolving it, and now pay attention that we're going to add the symbols that we have on the new card to the symbols of the card that we played in the previous round. And we're either going to do this execution step again, if uh, we still need to, so again up to three times. After we have resolved this phase three times, if we still have uh, units from two factions, we need to see who is going to be the winner, and that is according to how much morale you have. So morale is something that you uh, get from the different units, as you can see right now on the faction sheet, and also from the combat dice like we can see over here, and sometimes also from combat cards. So you're going to sum up all of the morale and the faction that has a more morale is going to win that combat. In case of a tie, it's going to be the defender that is going to win. So let's say that the blue player A has won. So first of all, if there was a building in that contested area and the attacker won, we're just going to change the ownership. So this token is going to go back to the red player and we're going to put a control marker of the blue player. So now it means that the blue player has one city. Then the losing side has to retreat. So in order to retreat for the defender, they need to move all of the remaining units from the contested area to a friendly area, if there isn't one, then to an uncontrolled area, either in the active system or in an adjacent system. Of course, ships have to retreat to avoid, and ground units need to retreat to a world. And ground units, pay attention, need to uh, move along a legal path. So we already talked about a path when we talk about the uh, advance uh, order. And if the retreating unit cannot perform this uh, retreat uh, because it doesn't have, for example, a legal path or something like that, then that unit is destroyed. Also pay attention that a retreating unit will always be retreated when it's routed. That means like this. Also, I would like to draw your attention to page 11 in the rules reference, where we have there uh, the retreat in a little bit more of a specified way. So it's a few more things to pay attention to, but it's really straightforward. And if you understood the retreat as I explained it, I'm sure that you'll be able to follow the uh, few extra rules over there. Pay attention that if the attacker is the one to retreat, all the retreating units will have to go to the same system, and it must be an area that at least one unit in the combat moved from, like we've seen uh, before with the movement of the ships from this system to this system. If after resolving the advance order, we have a situation where we don't trigger a combat, but we do have uh, some spaceships that are adjacent to a world that contains enemy units, we do have the possibility to do an orbital strike. In this case, we're going to take all the combat dice that we can see, again, in the faction sheet of all of those units. In our case, it's going to be six combat dice, and we're going to attack the ground unit over here. So we're going to throw it, and basically we're only going to count the damage that we can see right over here, and that damage will allow us to uh, potentially kill that ground unit. But if that world would have contained a bastion building, then a, an orbital strike cannot take place. In the refresh phase, we're going to uh, follow a certain procedure, starting with collecting the objectives. So if we have one or more of our units in a world that contains our objective token, we're going to take it and we're going to put it on our uh, faction sheet in a place that is called the objective tokens. Then we're going to collect material. So again, I'm going to show you this uh, banner that we can see right over here, for example. And in each friendly world, that means a world that contains one or more of our uh, units, we're going to take the resources that appear on the left side of that banner. In this case, for example, it's going to be two material. And we're going to indicate it by, again, uh, taking the value that we can see over here on the dial up. So from five, we're going to have now seven. Then we're going to rally routed units. And that basically means that each unit that was routed, we're just going to rally it. That means we're going to put it back in its normal way. Then we're going to draw event cards and we're going to move the warp storms. So each player now is going to draw event cards equal to the amount of uh, tokens that they have 
on the event deck. So as we remember, we have right over here with a, the green faction, two of these tokens, and that means that the green player is going to draw two of these event cards. And because the other players don't have any tokens on their event deck, they're not going to draw event uh, cards at all. So we have two types of event cards. One of them is a, a tactic and the other one is a scheme. A tactic card is something that you're going to uh, resolve immediately. It's some sort of a bonus. And then you're going to shuffle it back to your uh, event deck. A scheme card is something that can give you bonus at a later part of the game. So you're going to uh, take this card and put it next to your player sheet. Now, all the cards that you have not selected, you're going to reshuffle them in the event deck. Now, as you can see, the second part of this thing is to move one of the uh, warp storms that we can see right over here on the board. And that depends on the icon that we can see on the card. So if we're looking at this tactic card that is called how we gets here, we can see that we can choose one of the warp storms and turn it clockwise. So that means, uh, for example, that the green player is going to choose this one and going to change it just like this. Now it's important to say that all the players have to move one of their warp storms even if they did not draw one of their event cards. So going clockwise, this player is just going to draw one of his uh, event cards, the top one, and he's going to do whatever we can see over here with the icon, and he has to choose a warp storm that has not been moved before. So in this case, he will be able to take one of the warp storms and move it up or down. Let's say that he's going to do it just like uh, this, and he's going to shuffle this card back to his event deck, and the blooper is going to do the same. The last step is the end of the round, so we're going to take this marker and move it one step to the right, and then the first player token is going to move one location clockwise. Guys, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. I hope that you understand that Forbidden Stars is an amazing game that is totally worth playing. Take care, and I'll see you next time.